Welcome to the Uncomplicating Weight Loss Podcast. My name is Eva Rodriguez, proud Latina, single mom, and certified integrative nutrition, health, weight loss, and mindfulness coach. I'm passionate about teaching women how to balance being busy and healthy without complicated rules or restrictions. On this podcast, I'll be simplifying weight loss concepts and mindset shifts so that you can be confident in your curves. It won't always be easy, but it doesn't have to be complicated. In today's episode, I'm sharing a really powerful brain hack that you can start using right away to help you with your weight loss journey. This is something that I'll be doing a deep dive on in my upcoming weight loss program launching in January. So if you haven't joined the wait list, be sure to do so. Just go to eva.fit forward slash waitlist, W-A-I-T-L-I-S-T, and the link will also be in my show notes. This method I'm discussing today is going to help you process your urges to overeat or to give in to cravings that sabotage your progress. And while it's simple to implement, it can cause some discomfort. So that's where being coached by me will be really beneficial if you find yourself getting stuck. This method also builds on the previous episodes where I talked about food journaling, making decisions ahead of time, and using your scale for data and not getting emotionally attached to the number on the scale. They all tie together. If you think about it like this, losing weight is a series of decisions. It's all about the decision-making process. And when you make decisions from your higher brain, the prefrontal cortex that I talked about last week, then you're making decisions from your emotional adult self rather than your emotional child, which is the primal brain. Our primal brain seeks instant gratification. And the reality is that most of us make around 90% of our decisions using our primal brain which just facilitates avoiding pain, seeking pleasure, and overindulging. This is why in order to lose weight permanently, we have to start making decisions ahead of time from our prefrontal cortex. Decisions on what to eat, decisions on what exercise we're going to do the next day, decisions on how we're going to think and feel, these are all the little decisions that affect our ultimate results. So the first concept that we need to understand when it comes to permanent weight loss is making decisions ahead of time. So if you didn't listen to last week's episode, you may want to pause this actually and listen to that one first and then come back to this one because it'll make a lot more sense if you do. The second concept is learning how to interpret your weight loss data in a non-emotional way. So we're talking the data from your scale, your measurements, and your food journal. If you're trying to lose weight from a place of self-hate, self-punishment, or resistance, you will constantly put yourself back into a loop of seeking instant gratification with things like overeating, over drinking, over spending, because your primal brain doesn't like to feel discomfort. This is why the food journal is so important because you're learning self-awareness. You're learning how to develop integrity between your food plan and the execution of it. The more you practice thinking and planning for things ahead of time and ignoring your primal brain, the stronger that muscle becomes. The third concept is learning how to allow your emotions, your feelings, and your urges to just be there. In order to lose weight permanently, you will need to learn how to process emotions, experience urges, feel present with the vibrations in your body, and not be reactive. This part is not easy, but it's absolutely critical. Just because you're feeling a craving for cookies or brownies or chips or bread, doesn't mean you need to comply with that craving. Nothing will happen if you don't comply. You will not die, I promise. And I'm not just talking about willing yourself through it. This is not about willpower. Willpower doesn't work. It's not a good long-term solution. You will eventually lose that battle. And it's not because there's something wrong with you. It's just the way our human brains work. Losing weight has to come from a place of self-love because if you try to do it while hating your body, it's just not sustainable. And approaching it from a place of self-love starts with managing your mind and learning how to process and feel your emotions without reacting and without sabotaging yourself. That's how you overpower willpower. When we have an urge to either overeat or eat off plan or really do anything in general that isn't going to support our goals, what a lot of us try to do is resist it and push against it. If you picture a beach ball, right? Think about what happens when you try to push a beach ball underwater. It takes a lot of effort and the ball will eventually come back up to the surface. 
That's what happens when you allow yourself to react to an urge. Your urges feel urgent in the moment, but they're actually not. When we react to our urges, we tend to go into our emotional childhood, and that looks like blaming something or someone external or feeling powerless, thinking things like, fuck this stupid food plan, or it's my husband's fault for bringing home wine and pizza, or my coworkers brought cupcakes and now I have to eat one or they'll judge me. You feel angry at other people or you feel at the mercy of other people, and that's not an empowering place to be, right? But what if you just allow yourself to feel the urge? What if you recognize and acknowledge that urge? What if you say to yourself, my brain is telling me to eat this thing and that's okay. It doesn't mean I need to act on it. Your brain is just offering you a suggestion at any given moment. It doesn't mean that you need to take each suggestion that your brain offers to you. When you become aware of your thoughts, you become an observer of your brain and this keeps you in your prefrontal cortex. And again, this is how you build that muscle. And guess what? When you let yourself feel the urge, the urge will eventually go away on its own. The key is that you just have to let yourself feel it at first, and it's probably going to feel like ass in the beginning. But here's how you allow yourself to feel an urge. You start by opening up to it. Physically relax your body, relax your muscles. And you might want to go somewhere and do this privately at first until you learn how to just be in this discomfort because it will feel weird at first, especially if you have really strong urges. But be willing to feel it. Tell yourself, I'm going to learn how to feel this urge. I'm willing to feel it. And then get out of your head. Get out of that mental chatter and go into your body. Now, what does that mean? You want to focus on what it really, truly feels like in your body. What does that vibration feel like? Describe the feeling of the urge like you were telling a Martian who has no idea what emotions are. Like really break it down like that. What does this feel like? Where do you feel it in your body? Are you feeling it in your head, in your shoulders, in your stomach, in your back, in your chest? And focus on one area at a time. What does it feel like in each different area? Does it feel like a buzzing vibration? Does it feel like a heaviness in your chest or tension? Does it feel like tightness? Does it feel like butterflies? A lot of the time, when my anxiety comes up or when I'm feeling like I want to do something that I know I shouldn't do, it feels like butterflies in my solar plexus. That's always how I explain it. It just feels like this fluttering going on and it doesn't feel comfortable. It's just like, I don't want to feel this way. I don't feel grounded. So focus on like the feeling of it. And then tell yourself, this is what an urge feels like in my body. It feels like this. And I feel it in this location in my body. And I feel it like this over here and this over there. Be willing to explore it and get really good at just feeling the feels. This is how you get to know yourself. This is how you become an expert at feeling urges so that you don't have to avoid it and immediately feel the need to give into an urge with food or drinking or whatever throws you off of your goals. Because that's running away from it. And it will keep coming back just like the beach ball will come back. No matter how hard you try to push that beach ball under the water, it's going to come back. So make the commitment to feeling it because once you're able to learn the skill, it's a game changer. When you learn to stop giving into your urges over and over and over again, it eventually goes away. Give it at least 10 minutes to feel that urge. I found that it usually goes away after around 10 minutes of literally just sitting in the feeling of it. So in the short term, the urge goes away and you can move on with your life, right? In the long term, though, what happens is your brain stops expecting you to meet the urge and your brain stops offering that to you. So the urges go away quicker. They become quieter. They become less intense. And then before you know it, they're not there anymore. That's how you hack your brain, by feeling it and not acting on it. So the next time it comes around, you know that you're in control because you know that all you have to do is feel it, recognize how it feels, and acknowledge it without giving in or acting on it. And know that your primitive brain is never too far away and it is a tricky little trickster. 
your primitive brain will try to make all kinds of justifications and convince you why you should totally give in to that urge to eat the cookies, the brownies, the bread, the ice cream. Your primitive brain will say, you should just have one piece of cake, one handful of chips. What's the big deal? Just this once. Everyone else gets to enjoy it. Why not me? And before you know it, you're overdoing it. You've eaten the whole sleeve of cookies. You feel shame. Your stomach hurts. You've gone off your plan. And then you say, see, I, I don't know how to be consistent. And that's what I always hear, Eva. I don't know how to be consistent. And then down the spiral you go. So let your primitive brain be confused when you don't act on what's in front of you. Just let it. If there's ever anything complicated about losing weight, it's really just the mental management and thought work because we need to recondition and rewire our brains to support our weight loss journey. That's the part that takes the most effort, but that's also the part that makes weight loss permanent, which is why my primary focus is always to coach on mindset because exercising and eating healthy is actually really simple once your mindset is where it needs to be. I can tell you exactly what to eat and how to work out. That is so easy. How to manage your mind takes a lot more effort. That's why I don't just post my workout videos on YouTube and send you along your way hoping for the best. Like, good luck with that, right? It's nutrition, it's exercise, and mindset changes. That's how you get permanent results. When you learn how to manage your thinking and you learn how to feel your feelings and feel your urges to sabotage without giving into them, your life starts to change because you can easily apply this to any and all urges, not just your urges to eat or binge, urges to shop, to waste time on social media, to overreact to things can all be managed with this method. So once you can do this with your food, you'll be able to apply this to every area of your life. In my upcoming weight loss program, I'll be teaching a much more advanced method of managing urges using an actual physical jar as a visual reward hack. It's a lot of fun to do and it's super effective to fast track the managing of your urges. So be sure to get on my wait list so that you can be the first to sign up if you wanna work on that with me. But listen, my friend, you can start implementing this method right away. Just know that it will take courage, it will take resolve, it will take determination, and it will take focus, not willpower. But when you become an expert at feeling your urges, at feeling your feelings, that's when you will have complete freedom around food. And that is a game changer. I'll talk to you next week. Bye for now. Thanks so much for tuning in this week and trusting that none of this has to be complicated. At the end of the day, I want you to feel empowered to know that you can have the health, the body, and the life that you desire. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode and tag me on Instagram while listening at It's Eva Rodriguez so that I can support you along your journey. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.